Okay, in this video we're going to do an optimization problem and this is going to be the box problem where we try to maximize the volume of a box. So uh, suppose we've got a woman here and she's creating a, a box with an open top and she's going to do this by taking a corner uh, or a piece of sheet metal and removing corners of equal size uh, from that piece of sheet metal and then fold, folding the metal upwards. So if the sheet of metal is 2 feet by 2 feet, we want to figure out what's the maximum possible volume of the box that she can make. Okay, so again, the first thing I'm going to do in this is just kind of make a little picture, just to make sure I understand hopefully what's going on here. Alright, so she's got a little piece of metal, um, and she's going to cut out little squares from this piece of metal. And the idea is she's going to kind of fold, you know, this little remaining flap up, and this little flap would be folded up and up and up, and then you'd have a little box with an open top. So one thing I know is that it's uh, two feet by two feet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, remind myself of that fact. Now the thing I don't know in this is really, you know, I don't know how big the corners, how big the squares should be uh, to make this box with a, a maximum volume. So, well, I don't know what they are. I'm just going to pretend they are just uh, little corners of size x by x. Okay, I don't know what it is, but I know they're squares, so they have to be the same thing. Well, if you think about it, well, you know, the volume of a box, the volume of a box is just going to be its length times its width times its height. Well, you can kind of think about the, uh, you know, when you fold the flaps up, uh, this little part will be the base of the box. That part would become the base of the box. And then when you fold it up, um, again, this is going to become a side of the box, which means this little x value is going to become the height of the box. Okay, so let's think about the base. I mean, so originally, so maybe we'll, we'll think about the length as being, you know, this side. So the length of it, well, originally it would have been two feet long, but we're, we're chopping, you know, stuff off. Well, we're subtracting x units uh, right here, and then we're also subtracting x units right here. So the length, we could say, is really two, that's the original total length, minus x, minus x, or minus two x. If we think about, uh, you know, this maybe as being the width, well, really the same thing, uh, since we're tearing away squares, since uh, this has length x and this has length x, when we subtract, the width would also be 2 minus 2x. And to get the height of the box, again, you know, we're just folding this up. So the height of the box would just be x. So it says the volume of this box, all in terms of x, is going to be uh, 2 times 2 minus x uh, times 2 minus, I think I said that wrong, 2 minus uh, 2 times x, okay, I think I said that okay, multiplied by 2 minus 2 times x, and then times another x. So, all right, so again, you know, what we want to do to find, uh, you know, maximums and minimums is we have to take the derivative of this function. We could even think about this really as being on a closed interval, because notice x would have to be between 0, okay, it doesn't really make sense not to tear anything away, right? You're not going to get a box, but um, I mean, I guess theoretically, you, I mean, you certainly could tear nothing away if you're a bad uh, box builder. Well, I guess, what's the maximum value that x could have in this case? Well, you know, even just thinking about the length and the width, uh, we certainly can't go below 1, because if we go below 1, we would get a negative value for the length or the width. And again, if you tear away, you know, squares uh, that have a width of, uh, you know, one by, if they, if they have dimensions one by one, you're kind of just tearing the whole sheet of metal into squares, and then again, you, you don't have any box. So, so this is also something that we're going to want to keep in the back of our mind. All right, so, okay, to find a maximum or minimum, we take a derivative. The first thing I'm going to do is just multiply all of this stuff out. So v of x, so two times two would be four, we would get a negative 4x and then another negative 4x, so that would be negative 8x. Negative 2x and negative 2x would be positive 4x squared. We still have to multiply all of this by x, so if you think about you know, the x getting distributed, it says the volume in terms of x. If we distribute the x, well, we would get 4 times x. 
we would get minus x squared, and then we would get a plus 4x to the third power. All right, so now I feel I'm starting to feel pretty good. Um, I've got my function simplified. Taking the derivative of this won't be too bad. No product rule, no quotient rule, none of that stuff to worry about. Um, so v prime of x, the derivative of 4x would just be 4. Uh, the derivative of neg negative 8x squared, the 2 will come out front. We'll get negative 16x. 3 times 4, um, what is 3 times 4? So let's see, 2 times 4, um, what am I saying? So Oh my god, uh, 3 times 4 is just 12. It's very early here. So uh, 12x squared. I was thinking of uh, exponents for some reason. So v prime of x. Uh, and now what we're going to do, there's not really much simplification I think we can do to this function. Uh, what we're going to do in this case is, again, we have to find critical points. So critical points are where the derivative is 0 or where, where the derivative is undefined. Again, these, the, these solutions technically have to be in the domain of the original function, which they certainly will be because the original function has domain all real numbers. But, you know, there's nothing that makes this function undefined, so we don't really have to worry about satisfying this equation at all. So it says uh, v prime of x, which is uh, 4 minus 16x plus 12x squared. What we're going to have to do is we'll have to solve that equation where we set it equal to 0. All right, so probably the first thing I would do here, you know, I see a quadratic equation, so I'm going to try to either factor or use the quadratic formula. Hopefully this will, will factor. Um, might be a little, little tricky. We'll see. The first thing I'm going to do just to make the numbers a little better is divide both sides by 4. And then I'm going to write the x squared first because I like to see the x squared first. So 12 over 4 would be 3 x squared. Negative 16x over positive 4 would be negative 4x. And then positive 4 over positive 4 would be positive 1. We still have 0 on the right side. Um, I think this should factor. So at least with whole numbers, you know, the only way to get the 3x squared is going to be to use the 3x and x. To get positive 1, I've either got to use, pos you know, I've got to use some either, either plus 1 plus 1 or minus 1 minus 1. But since the middle's negative, that tells me that they're both going to have to be negative. So if it is going to factor with whole numbers, this is how it would have to work. And then I just check. So 3x squared minus 3x minus 1x. Hey, that's negative 4x plus 1. Great, this is the correct factorization. If we set each part equal to 0, we'll get x equals 1 third as a solution um, from our first factor. And then just x equals 1 from the other one. OK, so the idea again is, um, for this type of function, we're really finding an absolute maximum or minimum um, in this case. And we've got a nice little closed interval here from 0 to 1. So uh, there's a result that basically says the maximum, the absolute maximum or minimum has to occur either at the endpoints or at the critical point that you found for a continuous function, um, which we have here. Well, notice again, if you plug in x equals 0 into the volume, you're going to get a volume of 0. So v of 0 equals 0. And clearly, that makes sense if you're not, you know, because then you're not tearing any squares away, so there's nothing to fold up. Likewise, if we plug 1 in, again, now we're kind of tearing everything away. And if you plug that into your formula, you would get, you know, 2 minus 2 times 2 minus 2 times 1, which is going to, again, give you 0. So at this point, I can deduce that the maximum uh, volume is going to have to occur when x equals one third. So max volume when x equals one third. I think the original problem actually sometimes they ask for dimensions. Um, so we actually do want to figure out the, the volume of the box. Well, okay. So the volume of the box. Let's let's just put this on one more. You can go back to your original formula. Um, it doesn't really matter where you plug it in. Um, I think I'm just going to put it in right here. So it says the volume, when we plug in 1 third, well, we'll get 2 minus 2 times 1 third. And then we'll get another 2 minus 2 times 1 third. And then we'll multiply all that by 1 third. OK, so let's see. Uh, we can write 2 minus 2 thirds. So there's our minus 2 over 3. We could get common denominators by multiplying top and bottom by 3. So we could just make that 6 over 3. 
And again, this would be the same thing, 6 uh, over 3 minus 2 over 3, all of that multiplied by 1 over 3. So this will just be 4 thirds times uh, 4 thirds times 1 third. So that looks like 16 over uh, 27 to me. So in this case, the max volume would be 16 over 27. I guess we're doing feet there, so uh, cubic feet. And um, that's basically uh, all there is to it now. So, um, you know, again, kind of the tricky part, I think, in these problems, a lot of times is coming up with a formula that you actually have to take the derivative of. But in this case, it, you know, I don't know. It's I think it's, it's tricky the first time you see it, but once you see it, it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So... Um, the derivative wasn't too bad again, and then it's just a matter of kind of checking your critical points to see which one gives you the largest value.